the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Sam Perry entered the cafe in Dawson City and stood a moment watching the crowd. Finally, his eyes rested upon a man sitting at one of the tables with two companions. Sam walked slowly through the crowd. As he approached the table, the man at whom he'd been staring looked up. Then, without taking his eyes off Sam, he spoke to the two men who sat with him. Well, looks like Sam Perry's got something to say to us, fellas. I've got something to say to you, Luke Casson. Get to your feet. Hey, let me go. Sure, I'll let you go with this. Hey, what's it all about? What's going on here? Hi, Sergeant Preston. I just hit Luke Casson and knocked him down. Oh, I see. Let me help you up, Casson. Thanks. I want to fix that. Easy, Casson. Forget it. Sam, you come with me. I want to talk to you. All right, Sergeant. We'll finish this some other time, Perry, when the law isn't around. Any time, Casson. Come on, Sam. Let's go. Now, Sam, what's it all about? Why did you hit Casson? He deserved it, Sergeant. That's all I have to say. I could take you in for disturbing the peace, you know. In fact, Casson could bring a charge against you. He wouldn't. What makes you so sure? Because he knows he deserved that blow, and more. Now what's he done to you that makes you feel the way you do? Well, a few months ago, Luke Casson and I met one day in the cafe. Hey, Sam, I hear gold has been found up on Fox Run. There are a few more claims to be had up there. I wouldn't mind having a claim that'd pay off. You ever thought of staking a claim, Sam? Oh, sure. But there's more to it than just that. Take plenty of cash. Why, I understood you have some cash put away. I should think you'd want to take a chance of finding gold. <laughs> I'm willing. But I don't have the amount of cash you probably think I have. They tell me it takes about $500 to grub stake and work a claim before it ever pays off. If it ever does. Yeah, I guess it does take about that much. Well, what about you? Aren't you interested in a claim on Fox Run? Oh, sure I am. But frankly, I don't have that much cash either. Of course, there's a way both of us could get in on that gold rush. How do you mean? Pool what cash we have and stake a claim as partners. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose we could do it that way. Well, then why don't we? I... I'd have to think it over. Oh, now, don't be so hedgy. While you're thinking, others are going up that way and picking out the best claims. But we might not strike gold at all. Then we'd both lose what little we had. What's the matter? Afraid to take a chance? You'll never make a strike here in the Yukon without taking a risk. Well, uh, I guess you're right, well, let's but pool I... our cash, like I said, and go up there tomorrow. We'll stake out a claim and start right in. What do you say? All right, Lou, I'll do it. Good, good. You meet me at the trading post tomorrow morning. Bring your cash, and I'll bring mine. We'll get all the stuff we need, then head for Fox Run. In a couple of months, we may both be rich. Well, Sergeant, we got the supplies and things and went to Fox Run. While I worked around the place, Casson came into town and filed a claim. Go on. We built a cabin, then started working the claim day and night, hoping to make a strike. He worked one part of the claim, and I worked another. That went on for several months, until we ran out of money. I see. What did you do then? Well, one night I was very much discouraged. It surprised me even then how cheerful Lou continued to be. Anyway, he came into the cabin that night and saw me looking downcast. Say, you look like you lost your last friend, Sam. Snap out of it. Let's have some coffee, huh? No, thanks. I, I don't want any. Oh, now, look here. There's no use getting discouraged because we haven't found gold yet. 
Some prospectors work their claims twice as long before they strike gold. Yeah, maybe so. But you know as well as I do, we haven't the cash to go on. Well, I have to admit that's something to think about. Uh, didn't you tell me about a friend of yours in Selkirk who struck it rich a while ago? No, that's right. He's a fellow I knew back home. But he had plenty of cash to begin with, and he struck gold within a couple of months. Now he's really got plenty, hasn't he? As far as I know, he has. Well, then, why don't you go down to Selkirk and ask him for a loan? Go to Selkirk? Well, how am I supposed to get there? Use the dog team we have. Well, but what about you? How will oh, you get around? I can borrow a dog team till you get back. Go ahead, Sam. It's the only thing left to do. And I'm sure if we have the chance to work the claim longer, we'll hit gold. All right, I'll go. That's the spirit. I'll go to town with you in the morning, and you go on from there, huh? Then you made the trip to Selkirk to see the friend you mentioned. Yes, Sergeant, I did. When I returned yesterday, I heard our claim had paid off. I couldn't find Casson. But I did find out he'd filed a claim under his own name. And it sold shares to two of his friends. And you've been left out of the deal, eh? That's right. This morning I went to the cafe, as you know, to accuse Casson. When I saw the sneer on his face, I let him have it. That's what it was all about. I see what you meant when you said he deserved the blow you gave him. But it seems to me you'd have drawn up an agreement between you and you and Casson for a stake to claim. We did. I went out to the cabin last night to get the copy I'd put in an old jar in the cupboard. But it was gone. Then you have nothing to prove your own part of the claim. Nothing. And I sunk all the cash I had in it, too. Now, let me think this over, Sam. Maybe I'll figure out something. Meantime, keep out of Casson's way to avoid more trouble. If that crook crosses my path, I won't be responsible for what happened, Sergeant. Sam, don't say something you may be sorry for. Remember what I told you, avoid trouble with Casson. I have business here at headquarters now, Sam, but I'll see you again shortly. Come along, King. Shortly after Sergeant Preston and Sam Perry left the cafe, Luke Casson went to the store for supplies, leaving his two companions who were to meet him later. One of the men spoke to the other in a low voice. Now, listen, Wally. I thought of a way we can get plenty of cash. Become sole owners of the claim on Fox Run. Yeah? How? Everybody here knows Sam Perry is plenty sore at Lou for being cut out of the claim. They all saw him sark Lou a short time ago. Yeah. Even the Mountie saw that. Well, if something should happen to Lou, we could take the papers from the cabin and claim the mine. Yeah, that's right. But I don't believe Perry's the type it goes that far, damn. Well, if something happens to Lou, everybody think Perry did it, though. He's got plenty of reason to get back at Lou. Yeah. I begin to see what you're driving at. I noticed it's starting to snow. Lou's going on alone to the cabin. What's the snow got to do with it? We cover tracks of a couple of fellows who followed Lou and put a bullet in him. Mm. We're supposed to meet him out of the cabin in time for supper. Yeah, we could do what you're thinking. Circle back to town and be here when the body's found this afternoon. Sure. Someone's bound to find him along the trail. Yeah, what if they don't? Well, we won't leave town until he is found. We'll grab the papers at the cabin right after we plug him and come right back here. The snow will cover our tracks. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a good idea. We'll sit here until we see him go up the street toward the trail. Then we go out back, get our dog sled, and follow him. Later, Dell and Wally moved along the trail toward the cabin on Fox Run with their dog team. First! As they rounded a bend in the trail, they sighted Luke Casson a short distance ahead of them. There he is, Dale, just ahead. Yeah, here's our team. He's stepping away. I think he recognizes us. Hi there. Oh, 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 there. Why are we stopping? I'm going to let him have it from here before he gets wise. There it goes. That did it. Sure it did. Come on, let's go. Mush! Mush your huskies! Mush! Leaving Lou Casson near his dog team on the trail, Wally and Dell went to the cabin, took the cash, and then returned to the cafe in town. That afternoon, an old sourdough hurriedly entered Mounty headquarters, where hey, Sergeant, Sergeant Preston was talking to Constable Bill Darby. I just found Lou Casson's body out on the Fox Run Trail. He's been shot. What? Lou Casson? That's right. He's dead, Sergeant. I wonder who killed him. That's something for us to figure out, Bill. Well, if you ask me... I'd say find Sam Perry. He was plenty sore at Casson. 
and everybody knows it. We know all about that. Sam will have to be questioned, Sergeant. I hope he has an alibi. I can't believe Sam would do such a thing, Bill. <laughs> From the way he was talking last night, he would. Sam's young and hot-headed, Sergeant. You find him, and you'll have the killer, to my way of thinking. Constable, make arrangements to bring in Carson's body, will you? All right, Sergeant. I'll find Sam Perry and have a talk with him. Come along, King. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sam Perry left the hotel and walked along the street. He stopped to speak to a prospector who had a neighboring claim on Fox Run. Hi, Sam. Hello, Hank. Just come to town? Nope. Came in this morning. You hear the news? What news? I met Jed, the sourdough, has a place on Bear Creek. He was all upset. Said he was on his way to Monty headquarters. Seems he found Lou Casson dead on the what? trail a while ago. Lou Casson dead? That's right. Murdered. Somebody shot him. It looks bad for you, Sam. Folks will think after the way you were talking... I don't know anything had... about it. Thanks for telling me, Jed. So long. Huh. Ah, you sure acted mighty suspicious, seems to me. You'll have a lot of explaining to do. Yes, sir. Later that afternoon, Sergeant Preston returned to headquarters. Go on in, Ken. Well, Sergeant, I brought in Casson's body. Did you question Sam Perry? No, Bill, I didn't get the chance. I looked for Sam all over town. You think he skipped out? That's what I'm afraid of. It may mean that he did kill Lou Casson. Sergeant, I know you thought well of Sam Perry. I always liked him myself. But murder is murder. I know. If you want me to, I'll try to pick up his trail and bring him back. No, Bill, I'll go after Sam myself. I was seen heading down the south trail. I got my dog team, and King and I will pick up his trail and bring him back. Let's go, fella. <laughs> After Sam Perry left Dawson, the storm grew in intensity. When he had heard the news about Luke Casson, he felt certain he'd be blamed for the killing. So flight seemed the only way to avoid prison. Sam expected to be trailed by a Mountie, and he was determined that he wouldn't let himself be taken. Mush! Mush, you huskies! He pressed on without rest, hoping to put as much distance as possible between his dog team and the Mounties. Ho! Ho, you huskies! Finally, he brought his team to a stop alongside a ridge which afforded some protection from the cold wind and driving snow. I have to rest a little. As the weary huskies sank down in the snow to rest, Sam sat on the edge of the sled despondently. Suddenly, the wind blowing toward him from back along the trail brought the sound of a dog barking. Dog. Must be a Marty coming. Maybe Sergeant Preston and his big dog, King. If Preston is trailing me, he must... He must think I killed Cassin. But I'm not going to let him take me back. He's not going to get me. Mush! Mush, you huskies, mush! 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 Sam became panicky as he realized that Sergeant Preston and King were moving up behind him. A little further along, he turned off to a ridge about 100 yards back, overlooking the trail. A short time later, Sergeant Preston came around a bend with his dog team. He stopped the dog sled as Sam called out to him from behind the ridge. Don't follow me over here, Sergeant. Looking, pull your <laughs> Sam, I want you to come back with me. I'm not going with you. I'll have to use my rifle if you don't turn back without me. Easy, King. Sam wouldn't shoot me. Stay here with the team, fellow. I'm going over and talk to him. <laughs> coming over to talk to you, Sam. I'm warning you, Sergeant. Stay where you are. I'm coming over there, Sam. Slowly, the Mountie walked toward the ridge. Unknown to Preston, Sam's dogs and sled had loosened a heavy snow crust, which covered a narrow crevice in the ice. As the tall, muscular Mountie stepped upon the crust, it suddenly gave way beneath his weight. The Mountie went down, at the same time flinging out his arms, which stopped his descent, but left him hanging with his feet dangling below him. Sam, help me, quick! Since the slightest movement caused the ice to crack along the edges, Preston found it impossible to pull himself up. He realized that if he struggled to free himself, the icy crust would break under his arms and send him deep into the crevice. The great dog king saw his master fall and rushed to the scene. <laughs> then Preston saw Sam driving his sled toward him. Quick, Sam. I can't hold on. I'll slip down into the crevice. I'll get you out if you let me go on. No, Sam, I couldn't do that. But I didn't kill Casson, I didn't. Then we'll find the one who did. Help me, Sam. Help me. No. If I leave you, I'll be able to... I can't let you die, Sergeant. I just can't. I'll get you out of there. Quickly, Sam picked up a coil of rope from his sled. 
Tying one end to the sled, he lay prone on the icy crust. And then, with outstretched hand clutching the free end of the rope, he slid forward until his hand touched Preston's. Can you... can you grab the rope, Sergeant? I think so. Yes, I have it. Sam slid back. And then, getting to his feet, he called to his dog team. Mush! Mush, Sam! Mush! Sergeant Preston clung to the end of the rope and in a moment was safely on firm ground. Who are you, Husky? He sat resting a moment. And then, as he rose to his feet, he said simply... Thanks, Sam. I, I don't know why I didn't leave you. And go while I had the chance. I didn't kill Casson, but they'll say I did. Take it easy, Sam. We'll go back to Dawson, and I'll do all in my power to prove your innocence. Nobody will believe I'm innocent. I have no alibi. I went to the hotel room and slept for several hours. I see. Well, we'll do what we can to find the killer, Sam. Let's start back to Dawson now. It was late that night when Sergeant Preston and Sam Perry returned to Dawson. After questioning, Sam was detained at police headquarters for the time being. Early the following morning, Sergeant Preston went to the inspector's office to discuss the case. After hearing the details, the inspector said, And you don't believe Perry killed Casson? No, sir, I don't. I think if he had, he would have taken advantage of my predicament yesterday and would have left me. I see your point. Yet he could have shot Casson in a moment of extreme anger. Casson's murder was premeditated, Inspector. Someone must have followed him from town. When you first came in here, Sergeant, you spoke of a plan you'd like to try. Yes, sir. What is the plan? No one in town knows that I brought Sam Perry back with me during the night. That's true. Go on. The plan I have in mind is this, sir. Let people think I returned without Perry, that we've given up the hunt for him because we found a witness to the murder on Fox Run. But there wasn't a witness, Sergeant. That's right, sir. But if people think there is, whoever did kill Casson might try to get to him. Hmm. But someone would have to pose as the witness. There's a way we might work it, Inspector. But first, let me ask you this. If you had something confidential that you didn't want to get around, what man in town would you definitely keep it from? <laughs> That's easy. Gabby Eaton, the hotel clerk. That's exactly right, sir. <laughs> I propose that Constable Darby dress like a trapper. I'll disguise his face a bit, and then I'll take him to the hotel and engage a room on the ground floor. I'll tell Gabby confidentially that I brought back someone who might be a witness to the killing. The news will be all over Dawson within an hour. Right. The constable and I will go to the room and fix things so there will appear to be a man sleeping in the bed. The constable will go out the back way. I'll go out past Gabby's desk and warn him again that no one but the police are to go to the witness's room. And from then on, we watch for someone to try to reach the supposed witness. Is that it? Yes, sir. Your plan is worth a try, Sergeant. So go ahead. And good luck. It was still early in the morning when Sergeant Preston, with Constable Bill Darby disguised as a traveler, entered the lobby of the hotel, which at that hour was deserted. Morning, Gabby. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning. Did you catch that young fellow, Sam Perry, you went after? No, I gave up the search when I located a man who... Uh... Oh, listen, Gabby. Before I say any more, I must tell you, this is very confidential. Oh, sure, Sergeant. You know you can count on me. Yes, I know as I started to say, Gabby, I located a trapper who might be able to name the killer who shot Casson yesterday. Great day. You mean you found someone who actually saw the shooting, huh? I didn't exactly say that, you know. Of course not. Of course not. Headquarters wants to engage a ground floor room for this man, Gabby, and no one is to go near the room except the police, you understand? I get it, Sergeant. This here quiet fellow with you is the witness who saw the shooting. Say, stranger, what did the killer look like? Would you Gabby, there's him? no use asking him questions. He's been told not to talk to anyone. Oh. What room's available? Yeah, let me see now. Yeah, now here's the key to 102. That's the end of the hall at the back, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. Now remember, not a word, Gabby. Oh, of course not. All right, mister, we'll go to your room now. Come on. Wait here, King. I'll be right out. Not long after that, Gabby, the hotel clerk, was off duty. He hurried to the cafe and entered. <coughs> Trying to act nonchalant in spite of his excitement, Gabby walked to the bar where a small group of men stood talking. Good hey, morning, everybody. Where's Gabby? Suppose you're all talking about the murder on Fox Run. <laughs> Coming to get an earful, Gabby? Yeah, Gabby has to get the latest news. Yeah. Well, now I don't know about that. Maybe I already got the latest news. Later than any of you have heard around here. Uh, easy seeing. Gabby's got a choice bit he wants to toss into our midst. Hey, eh, boys? <laughs> well, seeing as how you aren't interested in anything I might know, there's no reason for me to stay around and get insulted. Oh, we were only kidding, Gabby. Yeah, yeah we know you got something to tell. Come on, Gabby, let us in on it. Well, 
Maybe I do know the latest developments about the murder. You mean Sergeant Preston caught Sam Perry, is that it? No, but I do know Sergeant Preston is back in town. Oh, we know that, too. I saw him a while ago. You aren't telling us anything new. I suppose you know why he's back in town so soon. Reckon he lost Sam Perry's trail, that's all. (laughs) That's where you're wrong. Matter of fact, the police gave up the hunt for Sam Perry. Yep, that's a fact. Gave up the hunt for Perry? Gosh, he murdered Cashin, didn't he? Well, maybe he did, and then again, maybe he didn't. What do you mean by that? There's no maybe about it, as far as we all know. <laughs> Look, what would you say if I told you something I found out a while ago? Of course, it's it's supposed to be a secret, so you'll all have to promise not to spread it around. You can count on us, Gabby. We can keep a secret as well as you can, can't we, boys? <laughs> <laughs> then, then listen to this. Sergeant Preston brought back a trapper who actually saw the killer. Oh, mackerel, is that the truth? Help me, just true as I'm standing here. Police are hiding the witness at the hotel. They lock him up alone in the room and nobody can see him. Well, what are you doing? Remember, not a word of this to anybody, my child. Oh, no, Gabby, don't worry. Well, I gotta get to the store now. I'll see you all later. Yeah, 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 Gabby. Bye, Gabby. Gabby. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there goes Gabby spreading the news. Man alive, that secret will be all over town in no time at all. (laughs) Meantime, Sergeant Preston and the disguised constable had gone to the room. And after fixing what appeared to be a sleeping figure in the bed and locking the door, Preston went out the front way and the constable by the back. By noon, Gabby had spread the word all over town. The crook Wally, with a worried look, entered the cafe in search of his partner, Dell. Wally walked to the table where Dell was sitting alone. Dell, have you heard the news? I just came to town from the cabin. What news do you mean? The police gave up the hunt for Perry. Why? Old Gabby at the hotel says Sergeant Preston came back with a trapper who saw the killing. What? Yes, that's right. Police are hiding the witness at the hotel for the time being. Gabby says the trapper can point out the killer when he's ready. That ain't good. We better hit the trail out of town, Wally. Yeah, that wouldn't help if the trapper saw us and gives a description to the Mounties. The trailers and get us sooner or later. Well, what can we do? If that witness was dead, they wouldn't have anything to build a case on against us. But the Mounties will have them under guard, most likely. Ah, Gabby says it isn't supposed to be known the trapper's at the hotel. He says he's alone in the room. Well, what'll we do? It gets dark early. We'll wait until dark, and we'll get that trapper, one way or another. At dusk, Wally and Dell entered the hotel and approached the desk, where Gabby was again on duty. Uh, hi, Gabby. Howdy, gents. Uh, Dell and I want a room. We're, we're going to spend the night in town. You want a room for two, eh? Huh? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, here you are. Room 206. Upstairs and straight back. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, uh, say... This isn't near that trapper's room, is it? The fellow the Mounties... Now, look at here. I don't know what you mean. Well, we just don't want to be disturbed by Mounties going in and out, that's all. Oh, that. Well, well, don't worry. If there was somebody that was keeping here, he'd be in 102. Oh, that's all right, then. (laughs) Well, let's go to our room, Wally. Yeah, yeah, let's. Later that night, Wally and Dell sneaked down a back stairway and stopped in front of 102. Meantime, Sergeant Preston with King and Constable Bill Darby had entered the back door of the hotel and were waiting in a vacant room across from 102. They heard steps in the uncarpeted hallway. Preston spoke in a low voice. Quiet, King. Bill, someone's in the hall. Yes. Now leave the door open a little. You have your gun ready in case he's awake. If he's sleeping, I have my knife ready. What if the door's locked? <laughs> I lifted Gabby's pass key from the nail at the desk when he was talking to us. I'll unlock the door. Come well, on, let's go in. They've gone inside, Sergeant. We'll wait until they come out. That room is dark. He'll use the knife on the fake figure in the bed. I want them to think they've killed a man in there. Well, they must be coming out now. King hears them. Hey, something's wrong. There was a dummy in the bed. Beat it back to our room. Let's grab them. Come on. Rage, both of you. Holy smoke, a couple of mounties. Here's your gun, Dale. Hold it. No, my arm. No. You won't get me. Get him, King. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Help. 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 Help.
Bring that man, Bill. Right. Duncan, come for us. I'll take your gun. What's going on here? I heard shooting. Gabby, these men found out about the witness I told you about this morning. Huh? We caught them coming out of room 102. Great day. I looked in room 102, Sergeant. I used a knife. Now, wait a minute. You haven't got anything on us. We'll have plenty on you two before we're through. Let's take them to headquarters. Come on. All right, let's go, you two. All right, take them. Later, at headquarters, Wally and Dell were grilled about Casson's murder. Wally, thinking that Dell was trying to put the blame on him for the attempted murder of the supposed witness, told the Mounties that Dell had fired the shot that killed Casson. As the questioning was about over, Constable Darby, who had gone to search Wally and Dell's room, entered headquarters. I found this cash box, Sergeant. Oh? Shall we open it, Inspector? Yes, of course. Here's a copy of an agreement between Casson and Sam Perry, saying they're partners in the claim, and that if one dies, the other inherits. Bring in Sam Perry, Constable Darby. Yes, sir. Yeah, but I, I thought Perry skipped town yesterday. I brought him back during the night. He's here. But that trapper, the witness. <laughs> Your plan worked, Sergeant. They really believe there was a witness. They knifed a roll of blankets in the hotel room. You can't hold me for murder. Yes, we can. We're arresting you and your partner for the murder of Lou Casson. Sergeant... Did they admit it? Yes, Sam. These two men killed Casson. You're in the clear. What's more, this paper here makes you owner of the claim on Fox Run. Yeah, but what about us? We, we... The Crown will see that you hang for Casson's murder. Thanks, Sergeant, for what you've done for me. Well, Sam, when you saved my life on the trail, I was certain you couldn't be guilty of Casson's murder. For a time, Perry, we were convinced at headquarters that you were guilty. That's why I left town. I knew everybody, including the police, would think I'd killed Casson, even though I hadn't. Thanks to Sergeant Preston's fine judgment of human nature and to his ingenuity, we have the real killers. Gosh, if it hadn't been for the Forget sergeant... Forget it, Sam. All your worries are over now. Casson's killers are in our hands, so this case is closed. In our next adventure, Sergeant Preston meets an excited sourdough on the trail to Wolf Creek. Looking for you, Sergeant Preston, thank heavens I found you. What's wrong, Bernie? The storekeeper at Wolf Creek was shot to death last night. Doug Leonard's accused of the murder. Doug Leonard? He's no killer. Of course he's no killer, but the evidence is against him. Now a fellow named Marcus Tate is trying to stir up a mob to lynch him. Come on, King. Doug's life depends on us. On gang! On you, Husky! Even though Doug Leonard is innocent, he may die before he can be brought to trial. And when Sergeant Preston tries to save him, he may find himself facing death at the hands of the real killers. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until tomorrow. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.